Memory is the storeroom of the mind. A dusty attic of experience stacked with knowledge. Sometimes useless, sometimes priceless. Once in a while we must lift the shades, dust off the years, and with our souvenirs seek to recapture the past. For there lies reason for the present and vision for the future. Far in the dim recesses of the mind, memory fades. People and things lie frozen in the grip of time. But as the years draw closer, memory flickers into life. Uncertain, hardly real. A little closer, yet still softened in the gentle retrospect of time. Where shall we look for yesterday? still gape, the tears still flow. Memory recoils to somewhere in between. A year quite real, yet half forgotten, caught in a sunlit haze of peace. There the shadows lengthened unobserved, for the sun was in our eyes. Lazy bones, sleeping in the sun. How you expect to get your day's work done? Ever get your day's work done? Sleeping in the noonday sun. Lazy bones, sleeping in the shade. How you expect to get your call me made? Never get your call me you made no sun sleeping in the evening shade. When tenders need spraying, I bet you keep praying, the slugs fall off of the vine. And when you go fishing, I bet you keep wishing, the fish will grab at your line. Lazy bones, loafing through the day. How you expect to make a dime that way? Never make a dime that way. Now looky here, you better mind the words I say. The sun shone too on the vanquished. Berlin, proud city of an ex-enemy, still stood intact. But already there was one as Chancellor, whose schemes were to bring it crashing in the dust. Once a week, my husband and I, we would go to the war memorial. My brother was killed at Verdun. Memories die hard. There is only one thing that can make you forget, and that is another war. And nobody wanted that. What a lively city Berlin was in the summer. For a German, no other city could be quite the same. The crowded streets, the shops, the trees on under den Linden, the friendly gossip in the cafes. Yes, it was a lovely city. That was the last time we saw it. We had to leave then for my husband's health. In Germany, a cloud was forming, as yet no bigger than one man's hand. Meanwhile, over the mountains in the tranquil air of Switzerland, the leaders of many nations were searching for the secret of perpetual peace. 
On Geneva's lawns, the statesmen talked in league for this honorable purpose. Talked and watched their palace grow. For there, by a placid lake, an elusive dream was taking concrete form. It seemed that God was in his heaven and all would be right with the world. There was a lot of cornmeal not made that summer. We built a tower up to the sun with gold, other people's gold. The world was settling with Uncle Sam. It was coming to us, I guess. We didn't know what to do with it. Anyway, it never got as far as me. I left things like that to guys like Henry Ford and old John D. Rockefeller, guys that said they understood it. I was in business on my own. You know what a depression is? It's when prosperity is just around the corner. <laughs> yeah, the next one. Well, we had a depression. Worse than that, we had prohibition. Things seemed to be breaking up all around us, and a lot of hopes went down the drain. You've heard them talk about those hungry millions? Well, we was thirsty, too. We were the richest country in the world, so I guess we had to be the sickest. And when a country the size of America gets sick, it's apt to be a little catching, you know? In spite of the sun, it wasn't so hot in Europe, either. At home, Ramsay MacDonald was Premier of a national government. For Britain and the world, Prime Ministers and aeroplanes had as yet no fateful meaning. Most of us found time to laugh and play while the sun still shone. In that brilliant summer, prodigal sunshine encouraged the pursuit of the open-air pleasures. Walking became a communal activity graced with a new name, hiking. Motoring was cheap, the roads of Britain showed it. Cycling clubs flourished, and thousands streamed from their crowded cities to pass the leisure hours in the green hills and lanes of the countryside. That summer, Britain became the great outdoors. Its people were discovering their land and each other. his record. Gordon Richards. I could have killed him. Do you remember the Derby that year? The King was there. King George V it was then, of course. Grand old gentleman. Hadn't been well for years, but that never stopped him. You'd always see him around. What a race it was that year. <laughs> Wasn't a race at all, really. Right from the start, there was only one horse in it. Once they passed Tattenham Corner, it stuck out a mile. Lord Derby didn't half look proud when he went to lead in the winner. Yes, the winner. 
high period, with Tommy Weston up. The only snag was hired back Gordon Richards. Still is all in the game. There was some good tennis that year. That's Alan Jacobs. Dorothy Rand. Remember this one? <laughs> yes, it's Betty Nuttall. Vines, playing Crawford. Of course, the real starter was Fred Berry. That year we won the Davis Cup. First time in 21 years. Lovelock's the name. J.E. Lovelock of New Zealand. That year he broke the world record for the mile. Four minutes, seven and three fifths. Another record breaker. Yes, is Wally Hammond. Knocked up 336 against New Zealand. Ah, oh, now I am on my own ground. League champions, the Arsenal. Crack team that season. But they didn't get the cup. That went to Everton. Yes, Everton beat Manchester City 3-0. The most decisive victory for 20 years. I suppose it's hardly necessary for me to add that I put my shirt on Manchester City. Well, no man's infallible. And Manchester City didn't have a Dixie Dean. No. Len Harvey, light heavyweight champion of Britain. Heavyweight champion, Jack Peterson, getting the only belt a boxer likes taking. They had to weigh this one in sections. Recognise him? Heavyweight champion of the world, Primo Carnera, also known as the Amblin Alp. All right, if you care for mountain scenery. Here's Lindra giving an exhibition. 94, 96. 98, 100. That year, Scott Payne took a crack at the water speed record in Miss Britain the third. Then he burst into flames. Well, the boat did anyway. Bit of bad luck there. But Malcolm Campbell did the trick. Malcolm Campbell's Bluebird. I knew a fellow who had five bob on that. Thought it was a horse. Yes, he went down Daytona Beach in Florida at 272 miles an hour. You couldn't see him for dust. But elsewhere too in America, the dust was blowing. Sadly, hopelessly, evoking a song of a railroad built, made to run against time. And the wind that caused it echoed bleakly through 48 states. Washington, an army pitched camp on the lawns of the Capitol. A restless reminder that the wind was blowing. In Washington, too, you couldn't see things for dust. But inside, things had happened. Four years were up. A term had ended, and another was just beginning. I, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. This is preeminently the time to speak the truth, the whole truth, frankly and boldly. Nor need we shrink 
from honestly facing conditions in our country today, this great nation will endure as it has endured, will revive and will prosper. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. In Britain, socialist demonstrators marched to Hyde Park. There, George Lansbury, leader of His Majesty's opposition, said, You've balanced the budget. You've cut down the war debt. You've done no end of wonderful things. And trade still bad. Still three, three million people out of work. Mr. Wells, have you any uh, uh, solution for the very unhappy state of affairs that uh, is facing the world today? It seems to me we have increased the productivity of our social, of our economic organization so greatly that a smaller and smaller proportion of people can produce everything that we need. The consequence is that a large and larger number of people are being forced out of employment and are unable to consume. 